this is Dee here from Glasgow Loves EU and I'm really really delighted that we have the very uh, wonderful Stuart Braithwaite of Mogwai with us tonight to uh, chat through a few things with us. Hi Stuart. Hi, Hi Dee, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I've been running down memory lane in the last, uh, the last few days and reminiscing over some of our old adventures in the past but uh, I won't bore everybody with those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we also have Bernd um, twiddling the knobs and uh, Manon will be uh, uh, bringing in the questions when they, they come up. So uh, if uh, anybody anybody out there in, in, is watching is unaware of Stuart, well let me introduce him. <laughs> He's the found, one of the founder members of the magnificent Scottish band Mogwai who have been going for 25, 26 years, something like that? 25. 25, 25 you're, years. You're making me e even older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I've always loved about you is that, um, I, can I read you something? Can I read you something that, this is, this is something that I wanted to just say. Mogwai are a band to make your heart stop and your toes curl. A band to get completely lost in. A band that by the end of 1997 will have many people kneeling at their feet. How many ways can I put it? They are just truly, truly wonderful. Uh, that was written by me <laughs> in 1997. Um, so you know, you, you've 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 always done your own thing, and and uh, you know the sort of music you make is is kind of difficult to to put in a box and and categorize. And what what is amazing is that you you you're still doing it, and you're still doing what you've always done. So do, do you want to just sort of say a couple of words about the band before we get into the con? contemporary discussion yeah we're 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 for people who maybe don't know we're we're a band from glasgow although we don't all live in glasgow now barry our piano player lives in berlin um mm -hmm. and um yeah we started in 1995 25 years ago our music's mostly instrumental we also do um uh quite a lot of music now for tv and film mm -hmm. um so yeah we've um we're very very lucky to still be getting away with it yeah good <laughs> well i think i think the kind of move into into soundtracks i mean was was Zidane the first one you did the the football one yeah yeah other other people had used their music in 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 different things but that was the first time we actually got given a project where we mm -hmm. um were given free reign to write write specific music for it and since then we've done a few other things we did a French TV show called Le Revenant or The Return yes. that was on called here. Um, yeah. We just did another TV show, yeah, Atomic, uh, really yeah. great. That's amazing. Film, That's filmed amazing. by Mark Cousins, which was commissioned by the BBC um, to go out on the, I think it was the 70th anniversary yeah. of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki yeah. nuclear bombings. So it's a very um, powerful documentary with a lot of images of of that terrible event and also other aspects of nuclear energy and power and um yeah we just did another tv show called zero 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 which has not been on the tv here yet for some reason but apparently will be at some <laughs> point <laughs> so um that's great thank you and it's uh, it's great to know that you're still doing and your gigs are amazing i mean you know i i still come and see you play and it's just it just you just send me off into a world of of something that is just different to anybody else you know much as i love loads of other bands but, you know always in my heart Stuart. uh anyway so let's talk about lockdown haha -ha. um how has it been for a professional muse museum <laughs> professional musician <laughs> <laughs> professional Fro musician Freudian slip them. there yeah um i mean I, I think i think on a personal level it, it it's been hard like it's been hard for everyone you, you know we we're just chatting before this come on i saw my mum today it's only the mm -hmm. second time i've seen her in four months um so the, that's been hard and obviously all the, the worry and everything's not 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 been great but professionally I've actually managed to get quite a lot done. We're about to do a new record, so I think I've probably been able to, or have managed to apply myself to it, maybe more than I would have otherwise. So it's been okay, but obviously the the big worry 
um, at the moment is the the live yes. in, yeah. industry because mm-hmm. we we've had to cancel some gigs, not an awful lot. Because as I said, we were going to record this this summer, but it's it's how most musicians get by. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's re- it's really just um, hoping that in the not too distant future people are going to be able to get back inside venues and watch music so um yeah that's that's a worry but because of our schedule it wasn't it wasn't a huge issue for us because we weren't going to be playing that much and i guess because of your um I don't want to kind of keep going on about the length of time, but but your kind of um, your longevity, but also your your position in in the music world. You've got loads of stuff that you've done. You, so I'm thinking of um, you know I know a, 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 a young band from Manchester, for example, who who were due to put out an album in in uh, April, and of course that didn't happen. So you know, and their whole kind of thing will be built on on gigging. They're at that level where they need to go around the the small venues and 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 these are the places that are, are going to you know i think even with this money so we need to talk about this money this thing that's mm-hmm. been uh, announced yesterday um you know even even with that it's it's going to be so hard for them to to just start getting their foothold into into that uh, into that world isn't it yeah yeah i think that it's it's hard enough for young bands with the way the record industry has been yeah really kind of swallowed up by streaming um so yeah this is just another another um bit of adversity um the good thing is people do still like music and and i think there's been a real show of support for not just musicians but the arts in general my my sister who i saw today as well is a a botanical artist Mm -hmm. and people seem really supportive of of um of buying art straight from from the artists and in the music side I've, I've noticed that with Bandcamp doing their yeah 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 um waiving their fees for a day a month and people just really stepping up and supporting artists and discovering new mu- new music in that way and yeah I'm, I'm I was really happy when I saw the the the, the government were going to give the the arts i guess it's not just music but sort of live arts um some support because it is going to be a really really hard time for Mm. music theater all it's like any any type of culture that involves people getting into a room um so yeah i I just hope that I hope they, they spend it wisely. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's that's the issue, isn't it? You know, that's the issue because you you, you the, the people have kind of been saying, oh yeah, this is great, this is great. You know, they're they're a lot of them are people who run big places, and you know they're mm. going to get you know the bigger places are going to get bigger slices, and it all depends on who is actually doing the decision making about where it goes and who it goes to, and it it, it sounds like a huge amount of money, but when you compare it to the I don't know what is it 30 billion a month or something they're spending on furlough 1 billion for the whole of the arts industry across yeah. arts and culture you know all arts culture museums mm. and you know all those sort of things for how long is it for the next three months is it for to the end of the year is it supposed to see them through into next mm. year you know by the time you chopped it into tiny pieces mm. you know most most small organizations are going to get pennies really Probably, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> you know? but, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's so important that it does go to the small organisation. I mean, we're we're in Glasgow right now, and um, the kind of the the lifeblood of of the music scene is the small venues, and um, most of them are are in fact almost all of them are run by people or small groups of people. I don't know everyone who owns a venue, but the people I know are not wealthy people. They're just yeah. people that have a have a have a small business, and and if every aspect of that business making money disappears for now, is it four months, um, and possibly mm. possibly another four months, maybe even longer. We we really don't know. Um, there is such a big chance that they'll disappear. 
and and if if they disappear, what I worry is going to happen is that either they completely disappear or a corporate company takes over that space and will they have the same ethos ethos mm. i mean it's unlikely you know like kind of the the people that run places like the glad cafe or yes, mono okay. or these people they're they, they really care you know if if, if 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 they didn't care about music as culture they would be putting on tribute nights and all this kind of stuff that there are other places that, that do that already so you kind of just hope that um that that's recognized mm. yeah absolutely so um it is going to it is going to be really difficult i mean you touched on it earlier but it, and you know obviously you you lived through the years when when you know it used to be cds and you used to get a lot of your money through cds and and touring was just sort of advertising the cds and that's with streaming that that's completely turned around so 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 people today a lot of people today think that you know music doesn't cost anything because they can listen mm -hmm. to anything for free so mm -hmm. that that means that it's sort of lost its lost its uh, monetization in the in the same way so i mean bandcamp's great if people if people use it but uh, and i really like the fact that on some of them you can pay what you like so you can pay more but i suppose that means you can pay less as well <laughs> but, so. yeah yeah i mean what, what one thing i'd say about that and it's actually really made me given me a lot of faith in in people in general is that people do pay more you know mm. i mean i mean some people some people pay hardly anything, but you don't know their circumstances. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe they've they've no income at all, and who who knows? But I mean, I, I know with um, we've done two releases on the label like that, a Twilight Sad live album, and then mm -hmm. our our recent soundtrack. And yeah, I was really amazed at how generous people were, and the mm. average ends up being pretty much what you would have asked people for in the first place yeah so yeah. so I, and, and i like that idea i like the i like the idea that that say someone's absolutely rolling in it or just a wonderfully generous generous person that that kind of balances out the people that maybe don't have any money at all so mm -hmm. yeah i think it's it's kind of it's a good model and it, it actually works because that when when radiohead um did that with their album was it in rainbows and so they people... gave it away with a newspaper or something didn't they no so no no well, there was no, one that they gave away i don't or... think they did i don't think they okay. did but basically what happened was radiohead put their new album pay whatever you want but they didn't tell anyone what people were paying for it until maybe it came out a few years ago but at the time they didn't and um i think people misread that to thinking well oh, music's now free Mm -hmm. because people's immediate presumption and i'm probably guilty of this as well was like well if you say to someone pay what you want then they won't pay anything and then there were a few things i think what you're thinking about the free with the newspaper was maybe the charlatans oh, and I think, okay yeah and, and i think prince did that as well and when something is free that really gets in people's heads as as mm. as as as, as not really worth anything um whereas i think if you if you give people an option of what do you what is this worth to you what do you mm. and i i wonder i wonder if that could maybe work in all sorts of things maybe even with like on-demand movies tv all sorts of things i think i mean i think i think some of those are are you know some of the the films and things they're they're charging for aren't they i think white yeah. riot is about a tenner if you want to watch that and things like yeah. that mm -hmm. but, uh, um anyway i think we've got a question from uh, somebody manon do you want to you're on mute at the moment my love thank you yeah, just um on facebook bill roger said sony's co corporatism nearly killed the music industry in the 80s that's sony then, corporation yeah mm. yeah well i mean that that that, that we're probably talking about when they first brought cds in and and they kind of 
price fixed CDs to be costing twenty pounds or whatever. And, yeah. Yeah, they were so expensive, weren't they? Then they were, and I and I actually think that that's been one of the problems with the music industry is that people remember that which was a rip off. Mm. But I mean, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the musicians who were. It would have been, off. No, yeah, it would it would have been on at a board level, and yeah, they're right. It it was a rip off, but I think people some sometimes kind of obsess on that and kind of think well they ripped us off for years so why should we pay for it i've heard that mm. argument but i kind of i think it's turning around i think i think the pennies drop that most musicians aren't aren't millionaires they're just do doing doing what they love to do and in in a environment that's that's never been more challenging mm. Yeah, because this social distancing, that's that's the thing that's killing it, really, isn't it? Because, you know, you can't, I, I, I mean, you probably can't imagine, I can't imagine a, a socially distanced gig. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, they're doing these drive-through things now. I can't imagine yeah. going to a gig in a car and sitting in a car and watching a big screen. That that doesn't really hold much appeal, but... No. No. I, I mean, you really have to hope this is all temporary. Um, and well, it's, yeah. it's, 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 so. it's, it's, yeah, and it, and it's great that people are trying to come up with solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you're so car- positive, Stuart. I, I'm, I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> oh dear. So, shall we talk about Brexit then? <laughs> yeah, let's 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 really party. Right. Okay. So you know, obviously we're a, we're a pro eu anti brexit group and we've been trying to campaign ever since we started and uh, now it's it's very bizarre the situation seems very bizarre but let let's think about specifically the aspects that would impact you as a touring musician going to europe and yeah you know what what are you aware of that is going to change come first to gen- forget covid forget that assume that mm-hmm. that doesn't exist but assume you've you've got some some dates lined up in several european countries in uh, uh, in the spring say and and uh, you know how how much more complicated and more expensive is it going to be for you do you think um I don't know exactly, but uh, no, I don't. I don't want figures. Just kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know, ballpark ideas. I mean, yeah. the the main issue I think is visas. Uh-huh. Um, at, at the moment, I could just I could just jump in my car with a guitar, and if someone wants me to play a gig in all these different places, that's fine. Obviously, you have to pay the individual taxes and all that kind of stuff, but that's fine. Whereas come January if I decided to do that months in advance I would have to sort out individual visas for every single country yeah and 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 the at the moment for most of the world we do have to do that and for some countries America in particular it's a fortune and it actually stops loads of musicians I know from going because it's it's an amount that a lot of musicians would struggle to make back, so they'd be the tour would be a loss with the mm. with the tra- with the travel and the visas. The tour would be losing. I mean, thousands and thousands of pounds. You know, I think I, th- I think an American visa is. is is a couple of grand there's different kinds of ones so i think it could be even more it could be even more at times so my real worry and especially given obviously none of us were happy about brexit in the first place but even even with the with that happening the the way that the Westminster government has behaved it doesn't make me think that any European country would be particularly kindly in deciding what visa arrangements they would have for musicians. Especially since the, the UK has such a strong music scene. Mm. 
-hmm. they might be of a mind to think well our we've got our own musicians here why why should we be taking away work from our people you know it, it kind of it brings in this kind of isolationist worldview and i'm not saying that would happen across across the board but it, it's something that worries me and it's certainly something that you see happening from westminster and i know they make it terrible for musicians coming in i mean so many um especially from africa mm -hmm. they just turn them away you know they yeah. just turn them away or refuse them visas and not 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 um no, that would be okay, but not new musicians. People with like track records of of being established, really highly thought of musicians, and they won't let them in. So you kind of you kind of see a situation where UK musicians will not unless they get to a certain level where they can afford it, will not be able to go and play in lots of places in Europe. And um, it's just such a tragedy because I think that culture is something that doesn't even have a language. Like we can, we can go and play in Poland or Indonesia or Japan. And people have the same experience. Music, music, music should be about taking down barriers and just to have something happen that is so regressive and so against the spirit of um, most of the last century is just so, so depressing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, cult culture and European culture is like, you know, it goes back much more than just last century but uh, obviously the eu and the ease ease of travel around the eu just made made things so much easier for everybody because mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think somebody made the point that obviously the beatles went to hamburg in the 60s before we were in the eu well yes but that's because all the things that have been created around the eu hadn't <laughs> didn't exist then and uh you know it's, it was a different it was a different world and it's just it's just it just feels like we're going to lose so much and and, mm. and it's as you say the cross cultural thing. I mean, Womad suffered for years, hasn't it? It's been complaining mm. for years about mm -hmm. musicians being being not allowed in. Um, I believe we have a question on Facebook, Manon. Yes, uh, Nick Bailey said, "Will well, you need work permits as well as visa?" So we need work permits as well. Do you think? What I'm talking about is the same thing, really. Okay. It's, a, it's, 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 it's a work visa. Um, uh, it's not the same as like if, if if you're a tourist and you go to America, you you just have to say you have to get like a tourist visa. Um, whereas if you're going there to work, you need a working visa, and if you have one, you don't need the other. So it's 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 really just a a variation of the same same thing. Okay. Um, but there's also, you know, there's all sorts of other things. So things like insurance, presumably, will be a lot more and there'll be presumably also a lot more paperwork, admin. I've, I've heard that you're going to have to like list every single string and widget you take with you and, and account for them all and, you know, whatever you take with you, you've got to bring it back sort of thing. I mean, that's going to be horrendous overhead. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, that already happens in some places. That already, that already happens going into America. and it's happened to us a load where the, you'll arrive with no sleep and suddenly they, they'll look in every single case and check the, check the... Is it carne or something? No, it's not yeah, carne. Is yeah, it carne? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they'll... French word. <laughs> yeah. They'll, they'll check the serial number of every single guitar and pedal. Jeez. And um, if you've made a mistake, they keep you for hours and it's, it, it's ridiculous. And then... The crazy thing about this is that they're going to just pretend, I mean, we're going to get into political territory more than just the music industry. They're just going to pretend that there isn't a border between the UK and Ireland. You know? 
Well, we could talk about that. That's definitely I, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I'm half of a mind to just make sure that every tour starts in Dublin and just fly it. Fly it <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you won't get away with that, sadly. But, <laughs> no, no. Because uh, isn't isn't the border now in the Irish Sea if it's not between the North and the South? So, mm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we don't really know, do we? I mean, that's that's kind of no. It's no, and I also. I mean, obviously, this is going to cause like an economic disaster, and you can almost worry, wonder if they're just going to use the 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 pandemic as the smoke screen and just blame every single thing on that you know and especially yeah. with the 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 way that the the london based media is so subservient to the tory party that people won't people will believe it you know that's 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 a concern i've really got yeah, I mean, we've we've been uh, talking a lot about that too. No, I mean, it's 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 almost like a blessing for them that they have this because, mm-hmm. as you say, they can they can just sneak everything through and all the um, oops, we've lost him. Oops, um, okay. Right. Um, you know, all the all the all the kind of things that we we've been banging on about since before the referendum, so more than mm. four years. Yeah. Um, they're all go- they're all just going to happen, and probably worse. And it and it almost um, and I hate to say this, but it almost makes you wish that Theresa May was back, because <laughs> at least she was trying to get some sort of deal and some sort of uh, yeah, you know. Um, and 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 I kind I th- I kind of feel that you realise that she was really holding a line when she was there. So mm. I don't know. Anyway, that's not really maybe not what we should be t- be discussing. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think we have another question come in. So, Manon, you got another yes, question? Yes, from Glasgow Lives EU. Okay, um, that's said, not me this time. <laughs> said Brexit has brought up uh, a lot of talk about nationality and so on. Um, do you think of yourself as a Glasgow band, a Scottish band, or a UK band? Or does the question just not make sense? Um, maybe music is the cure for narrow nationalism. I mean, I, I, I've always thought of ourselves as a as a Scottish band. Um, I know geographically we're a, also a British band, but just uh, I've always considered ourselves Scottish. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't know if that's even really a, a question of nationalism or just national identity or. Um, yeah, I kind of always, always um, thought that. Yeah, the the uh, to me the 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 different nations in the UK have very strong identities, and I always felt of them as 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 being separate separate countries even though with a political union so um yeah but definitely always felt felt scottish that's that's fantastic we love the scottishness she says in her perfect english accent (laughs) um (laughs) but you know that you guys and all the other wonderful glasgow but in fact i was reading back my older 90s writings and uh, I, I wrote at one day oh, I love Glasgow it's my favorite city and and sort of it took me 20 years to get here but you know it's a long way it's a long way anyway what you I was walked, gonna say you walked very slow I walked 500 miles <laughs> <laughs> yes I have to get that one in <laughs> um sorry we sing that every time we get together don't we <laughs> um I used to hate that song but I absolutely love it now because it just yeah, makes me feel part of being <laughs> Scottish I love the fact that if you come and live up here you're you're considered to be you know honorary Scottish just because you oh, choose absolutely. to come and live here yeah. and uh, that, that's fabulous and I can't say no so what I was going to say was that um you know what you're saying about the the, the four four nations um although we have the the, the political union um is that you know they're, they're trying to blur that now one of the things that's happening and really in the last few days they're really trying to to kind of make the make the point that it's one country and and uh, they're trying to make uh, political arguments with Nicola Sturgeon aren't they 
I have to be honest, I kind of avoid <laughs> the <YouTube>. news. <laughs> yeah, I do. I avoid the I avoid the news and, 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 and like I've even I've even kind of stopped looking at Twitter, which I was kind of addicted to for years. And it, I I find a lot of the kind of manufactured conflict so draining, you mm-hmm. know. And I know that I, if they're trying to like blur that I mean I even saw one of the last things that they were putting like Union Jack so in Haggis and all this kind of stuff and you're just like um and on the and on the Wallace Monument the fly off the Wallace Monument which I was like honestly <laughs> irony is dead but um, <laughs> we're gonna put it on scotch whiskey as well <laughs> yeah yeah I mean and I don't know I I, I think it's when when there was the Scottish referendum, one of the main things that people would would um, put as a reason to to vote no was how dangerous nationalism was, and the irony is that since Brexit, the only nationalism that's really worried me that seems really insidious is British nationalism which is or English nationalism or do you say British rather than English I don't I, I, I don't know I don't know Dee I mean I, I, I think to a lot of those people it's inseparable because it it, it comes from a sort of air a, a sort of feeling of superiority that 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 and so I almost think it's British because I think it's to do with the British Empire, and they see it's a sort of rule Britannia kind of mentality of like everywhere, and this and this this really was was stoked during Brexit in that how dare these people in Brussels tell us what to do? You know this idea that Britain. And I suppose England is, but it's hard to say because some of these people, some of these people are not English. Some of the, the a lot of this, I, this kind of mindset you get up here as well is this mm. idea of, of 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 Britain being exceptional and superior to other places, and that um, it's. It's such a terrible thing to to be seen as being equal to lots of other countries, you know, and mm. and it, it it kind of just makes me I don't know laugh in a sad way thinking back to the Scottish referendum of how many people were kind of up in ar- up in arms about this idea of how dangerous Scottish nationalism is, whereas. And I'm not saying everyone's white and white. There are probably a few nutters that are genuinely don't like people who are not Scottish, but generally I think people in Scotland are quite welcoming and and mm. and, and um, just want Scotland to be part of the world, you know? Well, like, I mean, that, that that's certainly, you know, the experience we had on Buchanan Street. I mean, we, we, we stood there pretty much every Saturday for getting on for two years and talked to so many different people. And yeah, there are, there are a few kind of who'd come up and challenge us. I remember, I remember we had one day, um, uh, no one, no one said, no one said yes to no deal or something like that. And somebody said, or well, nobody, nobody voted for no deal. And this is when this was, that this concept was still first coming up. And this woman came out and she was adamant that she'd voted for no deal, but no deal was never on the table in 2016. The whole point was that Brexit was just a concept. It was just a, a word. It was a slogan. It yeah. wasn't a, it wasn't a thousand page brochure like you had for the, the Scottish independence one. There was no, yeah. nobody had any concept of, of what Brexit actually meant. And, yeah. uh, and uh, so, so, but, but, but the vast majority of people, um, we met were were so pro-european and mm. and so many of them were european or were from other countries and they'd come up and say oh it's so lovely to see you and we're so glad to see you here and mm. you know and they realized that you know we do want to be outward looking because scotland is it, it you know i'm an incomer but you know burnt man on and i are all not native scots but we're all here we all mm. have a place here 
and um, I, I can't speak for that for them, but I, you know, I've I've not really met anybody that that has kind of you know turned mm. their nose up at talking to me. You talk to anybody, anybody talks to anybody here. It's just brilliant, you know. Um, yeah. Unless you want some peace. <laughs> unless you want some peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I can give as good as I get, Stuart, so... <laughs> but, yeah, but, 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 you know what, like, that, that person that came up and said that they they voted for no deal, you ju- you know where they're getting their information. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that they're, like, reading The Sun or The Daily Mail or, or, or something like this, and, like, it just shows you the... the, the power of, of media, you know? Mm. You even see it in America with all these, like, people sort of Trump Fox News kind of people that like had managed to politicize wearing a mask to stop a virus you know like if if the same message is repeated over and over and over and over Mm. again people will believe some sorry to swear but some really crazy shit you know Mm -hmm. like people people will swallow absolute madness Mm. you know and and it's one of the things that just really kind of really bums me out because I think people are intrinsically good and it takes the it takes these kind of organizations and these messages to kind of bend people's minds into into hating their neighbors you know Mm -hmm. I mean before any of this I never I never remember any not any, but it would be very rare that you would hear about like racism on a on an everyday basis. Whereas mm. it seems to have become so much more common after after the the Brexit campaign and then the then it actually happening. Mm. And you know, it, it, it's just so it's so it's so depressing. I, th- I don't think I think Scotland's been shielded from that to a certain degree but it's still there it's still the it's still the we're still um part of the uk we're still part get a lot of the the same media a lot of the same messaging and yeah it's 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 really 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 sad Mm. It is. It is very sad. Well, that's a very sad point to uh, <laughs> to get to at this this point. So I'm going to just for the last couple of minutes, um, just see if you can uh, uh, dream up a better Scotland. So um, a book I'm reading at the moment. I don't know if you come across this one. It's um, it's called Imagine a Country, and Belle McDermott and Joe Sharp, who's actually mm-hmm. her partner, who I met on the 31st of January down at Holyrood. They just were standing beside me. It was amazing. Oh, really? It's nice. And uh, it was really nice. And then I met them again the following month because they came to the uh, uh, book festival in Paisley. So they they were, Joe was actually telling me that they put this book together and they were going to launch it at iWrite, which obviously was cancelled. But what they've done is they've asked loads and loads of amazing people all across sort of arts and culture in Scotland to just just write short pieces about sort of five six hundred um words about how how they you know just just different ways of imagining scotland in the future so i wonder if you if you've got any thoughts about what you uh, how you'd like to see a a, a, a better kind of nicer future scotland i do d but before i actually do it i've got a confession to make which i've already yeah made to Val because I was actually asked to do something for oh, that. Oh wait, book. you know, I wondered why you weren't in there. Roddy Wombles well, in there, but you're not. <laughs> yeah, well, you can blame our new puppy because we got <laughs> we got we got this new puppy and honestly <laughs> my life was just completely taken over with because we live on the third floor of a tenement right. and carrying this little bugger up and down all these stairs so I, I, I missed the deadline and I, I've apologised oh. to Val because um, I should have done it and I was I was I was I was annoyed with myself for not being able to but I did have a pretty good excuse um, but yeah what 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 I was going to say mm-hmm. if I'd not been looking after a this puppy, is an exclusive folks this yeah, is what Stuart well, would have said <laughs> yeah I mean I, I would love to not live 30 miles from a pile of nuclear weapons. That's mm-hmm. that's one of my my main things. Uh, I'd love to live in a country where 
the people at the very, very bottom of the ladder aren't victimized for their circumstances. Um, and yeah, I would just love to live in a, a, a fairer place. I think with our parliament in Edinburgh, we're, we're doing, we're doing pretty well in trying to, trying to make the places as, as, um, as good as we can. But I think with full powers, Scotland could really, be transformed. So yeah, that's that's what I would like to see. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I I, I can't imagine anybody watching this who would disagree with that. And I think, uh, well, no, I can't. I really can't. I think we we would all uh, endorse what you say. I, I certainly would. So um, that's fantastic, Stuart. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your time. It's been it's been a pleasure interviewing anytime, you again. Anytime. Thank I mean, you so much. How many years later? It's okay. twenty three years later. So, uh, yeah. so I'm just going to. Just roll back slightly and uh, display my T-shirt, yes. Mogwai, <laughs> and say cheers to Mogwai cheers, with, thanks, in uh, my single malt that I've uh, acquired a taste for since I've been up here. So Good, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for coming on, really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, thanks guys. Cheers, See you later. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.